Hey guys, it's Kimberly from Keep the Tail Wagging, and this is part two of my chat about having a pet business with the ladies of Coco Therapy and Ruby of Real Dog Box. So in this last part, we're going to be talking about one of the tough parts of having an online business, and that's the social media world. Um, but one thing that I've noticed recently and what one made me want to get us together to have this roundtable is I feel like as people who are customers, one thing that I've learned over the years is not to jump to conclusions, but to ask questions. When I'm having a conversation with a brand, it doesn't go, like they're not saying what I thought that they would say. Instead of me assuming the worst, I just continue asking questions until I get a better understanding. And the example that comes to mind was recently I had a, um, a conversation with someone on Facebook about a brand that I buy to feed to my dogs and they contacted them because they wanted to know the specific recipe that they use in their product. So the percentage of each ingredient and everything. And they were like, no, I'm sorry that that's proprietary. And to them, that was a red flag and they, start, they're now on the mission of telling everyone that this company is shady, that, um, you know, who knows what's in their food, even though on their website, they tell you what's in the food. They just don't tell you the percentage It's in order by weight as most ingredients lists are. They just don't tell you specific percentages for many people, myself included. That's fine by me. It's a great company, but it's interesting how someone's perception of how a company should run their business and what information they can share will lead them to create a hoopla to damage the company. And so, you know, mm -hmm. starting with you, Ruby, because I know you actually dealt with something kind of similar to this, where instead of taking the time to understand, you know, that this is a company, these are human beings, they have responsibilities, you know, they don't exist so much to appease every single person's perception of what a business should be, but how quickly that can blow up into something insane. You know, yeah. uh, where's my question in all of this? <laughs> I guess my question is, how do you move forward in um, a world, in this social media landscape where people are so quick to attack and judge and cancel when um, things don't go their way? Well, I think, and this kind of goes to, for anyone who's looking at starting a business, identifying who your customer is, but also having, so identifying who your customer is, recognizing that not everybody is your customer. And that's okay. You know, it's free market. Anyone can do what I'm doing. You don't have to buy it from me. Um, so that's kind of the first thing, having acceptance of that, but also Establishing a set of values within your company, you know, as the founders or, you know, as your staff grows and always referring to that as your North Star. And, and because things get jumbled, you know, drama starts and then you want to fight and you feel like the whole world is throwing rocks at your door. For us, we established early on that we don't think the customer is always right. And that kind of line of thinking came with the hospitality and hotel industry, you know, fairly recently, not but a hundred years ago. And when, when we decided that that was how we wanted to run our business, it was really easy to formulate responses to people. Um, and I guess, so in that, when you were faced with a situation where I don't think the customer is right. I'm trying to do what I think is right and what I, you know, what I think is the right thing to do. Sort of getting caught up in that drama, but then revisiting it and saying, okay, what is the right thing to do? What what were our original company values and how do we move forward from here? And I think if you don't have that established, it's very difficult to move forward. You can't find your footing. You can't get on that path because you didn't have a direction that you were heading in the first place. Um, so for us, I, I, I really spent, you know, the last few weeks revisiting and going back to our mission. You know, what is our mission? What are our values? Because your vision can change. 
you know, mm -hmm. and all of that. Just, you learn new things and you realize maybe some sci scientific study comes out about what we this whole time thought was right. And you have to make a change. You can't just keep yeah. stay on that course for no reason. Um, so that has helped us a lot kind of move forward stick it's and it's not sticking to your guns in that you can't admit when you're wrong because i i have made a lot of mistakes uh and i won't necessarily say regrets because as we all know those mistakes are all lessons for us and if we didn't face them we wouldn't be able to kind of learn and move forward um but referring to that north star that set of values and just saying okay this is why we got into this in the first place. This is how we get back on track. And actually, Kimberly, if it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't have started blocking the haters. Uh, I, I don't really believe in censorship in that way, but there comes a point where you're arguing with, you just can't reason with yeah. crazy. <laughs> For lack like, of a I don't look at it as censorship to a point because I know what you mean. I I struggle with that. And to what you said about the North Star, you know, bringing up Krista again years ago, she told me something that we were talking about someone, and um, she said something that really stuck with me, and it became my foundation. And it was just that if you're saying your name more than you're talking about the dogs, then you need to take a step back and ask yourself why you're doing this. Because if I started my blog and I wanted to do this because I want to help dogs and I want to help pet parents, but if all I'm doing is posting selfies and talking about myself and, and um, ultimately then I have to ask myself, am I here for the dogs or am I here to get attention? And that's what has shaped how I respond to trolls because mm -hmm. it's just sort of like, you know, could this be a conversation that even though it's super uncomfortable for me, people following along can learn from it? Or am I just wasting my time basically spitting in the wind because this person just wants to argue with me? Yes. And if it's the latter, I am a banning block. I have a banning blocking routine, like to make sure that they go away. I, I had someone accuse me of censorship during the Real Dog Box fiasco. And it's just sort of like, no, I, I understand that you want to have a platform to say what you ever have to say, but you're just repeating yourself and right. you're not adding value to this discussion. So your platform needs to be on your profile, not on mine. If you and, want to have a discussion, yeah. fine. But if you're just going to be nasty and rude, then sorry. Yeah. As, as business owners, our time is so valuable. And to think that we're wasting it giving attention to something that's taking away from the people that want our help, you know, yeah, they want- 1%, this like yeah. tiny fraction of the audience, we're giving all of our attention to. Yes. yes, and so I had to remind myself of that. And I think that's also another way to move forward. It's go back to why are you doing this? Our mission is to help people feed real food. Is this conversation helping me help people feed real food? It's not, stop spending your time on it just focus on what's important. Yeah, what were you gonna I was say? just going to add to that. One thing I, I was thinking when we're talking about seeing those people who are difficult on Facebook and who, who are just crazy. You know, one thing I've seen is personalities really change when they're on social media <laughs> because we have met some people where they are just outright bullish and kind of really harsh on social media. And then when you see them, meet them in person, we have the opportunity to do that because we go to trade shows. Mm -hmm. So you might see somebody who's very harsh on social media. When you meet them, they're a meek as a mouse. They're yeah. a complete different <laughs> yeah. person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they hide behind their persona at social media. You can Google and copy and paste and sound really intelligent or whatever it is they're trying to do or prove or bully. But then when you actually meet them and they don't have that yeah, <clears throat> protection. protection of social media and whatever, they're a totally different person. So it helps me to remember that, you know, when I, I'm like, what is this person's problem? And I think what you call your North Star, we call it our moral compass, where we try and remember that every time we're responding to somebody or talking to somebody, like I would, I would never want to, you know, insult anybody, no matter how terrible they are. You know, you just treat them the way you want to be treated. And I think that helps as difficult as it is sometimes. Um, so we try and remember that. But you're right. I think the trick is, 
it's they're not always right. Customers. <laughs> well, I don't even know what yeah. I'm saying anymore. So, and you know this, Kimberly, yeah. and maybe Ruby, you know this. For us, we don't really have like one or two people coming on and bullying us because we're not probably like for you being a blogger as open to to everybody. Yeah, ours for just us, a page. it was one monster of a mega of uh you know entity yeah. in the pet industry that we that came after us. Mm-hmm. It wasn't one person. It was it was a pet. You know you know what I'm yeah, talking. Yeah, well, about. it was sort of like the 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 website that everyone knew that everyone came to that exactly why many of us do what we do yes we, i yes. mean i have so many blog posts that link to that website as an authority Tell that to it, was, to it was scary and you know yeah. your it was your you guys were in the thick of it but as me on the outskirts of it as a blogger um and it goes to both of your situations of um to me, that kind of feels like censorship, where when I'm now afraid to say things because someone is going to sue me or someone's going to get all of their friends to attack me and call me names. And, you know, and all of it, because I mean, because it's sort of like, what is what is the end game here? What exactly do you want? Um, and there really is no end game. It's just basically a mountain of rage coming at you. It's one of those where those of us watching this happen are basically silenced because we don't want to re- receive that same treatment. Yeah, and I don't, I, I feel that people don't understand the magnitude of their comments sometimes. Mm-hmm. And maybe it strokes their ego to get a bunch of likes and get a bunch of people to, uh, you know, agree with them and share their post. But there's people that you're hurting by way yeah. of doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. it's sad. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's- but um, I, I mean, I, I think the only thing you can do in that situation really is just stick to your guns and, you know, stick to your truth, you know, of course, you're not going to sit back and be a little mouse doormat and let people trample all over you. You have to defend yourself and your business. And, you know, obviously people expect you to do that, too, because mm-hmm. especially when someone, you know, someone with so much authority speaks out about you, you that could easily trample your business in this flick of a hat. You know, the good thing I think about this industry and when people see that in this industry, I think that's why they feel like the pet industry is at each other's throats. Mm -hmm. You know, because they see stuff like that and everybody's fighting, all these big companies are fighting, but what they don't see, and I'd like to point out, is there's a lot of people that are so supportive, Supportive. whether they're, they're, they're competitors in the treat market Mm -hmm. or food or whatever, they support you big time. Like, I don't know, this just opened her eyes when this happened. And Kimberly, you're one of her huge supporters when this happened. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're very grateful, but there's like so many other people that, reached out to us and said, you know, this just isn't right in this industry. Mm-hmm. And we feel like, um, like we'd like to interview you or support I mean, you in some way. Bunch of doors yeah. So that was really refreshing to see. And I'm not saying it's, you know, them against us mm-hmm. and, you know, all this yeah. thing, but you really have to align yourself with people who think the way you do and who respect other people's companies and, and point of view. And because if you're always focusing on the haters, then it's just going to be just tough. Yeah. To yeah. get, you know, it gets me nowhere. It's miserable. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think the pro, the thing that I've had to struggle with is the censorship part, because deep in my heart, I felt like everything we say has to be true. You want to be honest as a business, and you want to build your business on honest facts and truth. So to be challenged about that was very difficult for me. So till this day, I always say I will not be feared into being silenced. I don't care what. Do I read my blogs a little bit more carefully? Of course. Do I make sure everything that comes out of my mouth or my blogs are as true as I know? Without a doubt, but it's always been that way. But I don't want whatever happens in the past to fill me with fear and silence me because if that happens, that means that person won. You know what I mean? So yeah, it it was definitely a learning experience. Yeah. I'm trying to find a quote that I think I posted, but maybe I didn't. I wish I could remember what it was, but it was so good. 
but it was something about how, you know, when you shame people, you can't shame people into being better. You just shame them into acting better. And um, oh, that's, that's, what, that's what bothers me about cancel culture and this whole world where everyone just goes in on the attack. And it's like, true story, I kind of understand cancel culture because when I get pissed off with someone, I want them burned to the stake. And I'm I'm a real angry person. Johan gets to hear it because I'm just like, blah, 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 and I have, it's a horrible. But I keep it, off, keep it off of social media because the human being in me understands that even though I have a problem with this person, I, I don't want them harmed or hurt or anything like that. And this active thing of attacking people and shaming people, all it's going to do is, you know, basically make people keep stuff to themselves. I mean, I'm not going to change my mind. I mean, I guess everyone already saw, yeah, real dog boxes still come into my door, you know, and I'm still feeding my dogs coconut oil and I still think it's great for them. So, you know, all of that isn't going to make me change my mind. However, if people, had approached it respectfully and actually been open to a dialogue and conversation, I wouldn't have changed who I buy my products from, but I think it would have helped so many more people. Instead, I look at it as people who have dogs, because I've seen this with raw feeding, they just quit asking questions and they still continue doing whatever they're doing, but we've basically shut the door on them doing better and learning more because we've made them afraid to speak up because mm -hmm. if anyone says something that's unpopular, the response isn't, oh, that's an interesting point of view. Let me share what I experienced. Let's have a conversation. Instead, it's like, let's burn the stakes and how dare you and you shouldn't have dogs and, and <laughs> it's madness. So that being said, so when <laughs> after all that ranting, um, <laughs> so to wrap that up, I would say that, you know, one thing that gave me hope was seeing the support that you guys got. And um, basically people coming forward and saying, like there was Lori, the pet store owner, or Lauren, the pet store owner, who was like, she was going and getting studies and calling people out on, you know, a veterinarian came forward and said, oh, I totally agree that this isn't. And she was just like questioning stuff. And, and it was just like, wow. And with Real Dog Box, it was nice to see other people who were standing up and saying something. And the more people who are standing up and saying like, what we're doing is totally not okay. I feel like it gave, um, it empowered other people to stand up and say, yeah, I don't like this either. Because no one wants to be by themselves, you know, waving the flag of, hey guys, I don't like this. But <laughs> when we're a community, we can do it. So Ultimately, although you guys took, both of you took the brunt or all of you took the brunt of some really negative things in 2020, as a customer, I gained so much from all of it. And it ultimately made me feel a little more empowered to stand up for what I believe in. And so, although you guys took the hit, <laughs> I got the lesson and I appreciate it. Thank you guys. So now, now that I wrap that up, I want to ask you guys to wrap up, you know, it, now that it's 2021, the past is the past. Do you have, um, like, what are you taking into 2021 to just make it a better year for yourself? And Ruby, you can start. Oh, <laughs> I'm still processing. We're still in January. Um, <laughs> I think what the, my biggest lesson is accepting that not everybody is going to like you. Like, I, and so, you know, this, this was a business thing that I faced, but it was also like a personal life learning. Yes. And I think that's what was, because we had gotten so much, you know, grand feedback and there's negative reviews all the time. People have bad experiences and that's, that's okay. It's expected. But the hardest part for me was realizing like, they don't like me? <laughs> what do you mean? I thought we were all friends. Um, <laughs> and I think kind of recognizing and accepting that and like, that's okay. It really helps to shape the people that want my help. They want mm -hmm. to learn from me and you are my tribe. You are my people. 
And if you want to, you know, stick around and ask questions and, and help each other learn together, then I just, I think that it, for me is the best way to keep myself motivated and empowered and continue learning because they're counting on me. You know, mm -hmm. I have people that are counting on me and just remembering that you have a tribe, you have a support system and you just, you just ride that, ride it out. Nice. And ladies, what did you take from 2020 that's going to make 2021 better for you? Well, you go first. <laughs> okay. Well, for me, I think it's just realizing that you, you're not alone and you can't be alone and no man is an island. You need support. And whether it be, you know, friends or people that customers even, um, people you work with or a higher being, God, somebody, you need someone. So, so to me, I want to face 2021 with being more positive and knowing that I do have that support system. You know, I do have, you know, some sort of a, a value system and morals that I'm going to stick to. And I'm not going to be depressed thinking about the past. I'm going to look forward and, and surround myself with a knowledge that there are people out there that that want to help. And there's a lot of good people out there. Sure, we can all focus on the negative people and, you know, all the haters out there, but it's just not going to do us any good. And I think just putting your trust in, you know, on higher power, God, something is very important for us. I think that we feel like we have to, to um, st stick to, or it's going to be just hard to, to navigate this, this, you know, social media world or mm -hmm. business world. Yeah, you know, for, for me, I think um, this year, I, I'm not gonna take things too seriously. And, and by that way, I mean, like this morning, I woke up literally and I, the first thing I see, I reach for my phone and I check social media, any comments I have missed, because I try and answer and answer, you know, how that goes, right? The first thing I see on both Instagram and Facebook is somebody saying that our treats made her dog very, very sick, now in ICU with fluids and it's your fault and her dog's made. So the first thing I did was like, whoa, that will stop you no matter what, right? And then you have to step back and I'm like, okay, so she's doing this in social media on both my accounts. If your dog was really sick, wouldn't you pick up the phone and go straight to the company and they'll go putting it on an ad? She, she, it's one of the cocoa therapy ads. Of course I was concerned, but the first thing I had to do was let's not panic. So that's one of my things and don't take, you know, just, just be, I, I guess, be very careful in what you read and don't let it affect you. So I'm still going to look into it, of course. But like I said, you can't take things so seriously and that's not the end of the world because it's always something every day, no matter what. So especially with social media, it's always something. So you can't take any of that stuff too seriously and make it like totally ruin your life. Otherwise, you would go insane. Or you would give up. You oh, would yeah. literally... Yeah, yeah, because yeah. there's so many reasons why people would do that, whether it's the truth or she wants to ruin you or what, there's so many things and you cannot let it get to you. So you have to solve the problem. Of course, it's something serious, but like I said, it, you can't let it overtake ruin. and ruin your whole, just your whole well-being. It, it's, that's one thing I'm going to do this year. It's just not let it affect me, you know, yeah. mentally or emotionally. That's such a good point. And I wonder, you know, like how much of it is the fact that we're women so we tend to, you know, we want to get along and we want to be friendly. And, um, you know, it's because Scott was supposed to join us. And what's interesting about Scott is, you know, I wonder how much of it this is because he's a man and how much of it is because he's Scott. But Scott doesn't tend to let things get to him. Whereas we'll have conversations where I'm like, da -da 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 -da. and then he said, and here's a screenshot. And, you know, and, and Scott's just like, yeah. You know, you know, yeah, yeah. Thing where, yeah. you know, and it, it does it, it, you know, when someone says something rude or, you know, like comes for you on social media, it, it does feel like a personal attack. And I think part of it is because we started these business for a personal reason. And this is our passion and our love. And when someone, it's sort of like if someone comes and tells someone that their dog is fat you may be just stating a fact that, yeah, your dog can stand to lose some pounds, but the person on the receiving end of that hears you suck 
as a dog owner, you're killing your dog. Great job being an idiot. And then they immediately go on the defensive. So when we get negative feedback, especially on social media, where it's really public mm -hmm. and, you know, and I will admit, I, I tend to salivate with drama too, but people <laughs> latch on to that. And, and it's fun because it's like, Ooh, what's going to happen next? And, and it turns into, you have the spotlight on you, you're angry, you're emotional, and you have to try to respond, you know, professionally and sensibly with all this static going on, even if the static is just your own insecurities going, oh my God, they don't like what I'm doing. Um, it's, it's tough. And it's like, I think that it's probably advice that all of us can take into the new year is, is that we have to find a way to, to compartmentalize and recognize that there are just crazy, um, mean, unhappy people in the world who love nothing more than to tear others down and nothing we say or do is gonna make that go away. The only thing we can control is how we respond to it. And it's not easy. It's so super not easy. We have to channel uh, our inner Wendy's on Twitter. Yeah, it's Wendy. <laughs> Wendy's a fast food company. They have oh, oh. the <laughs> funniest <laughs> responses to tweets on, on Twitter. They're just, they just let really? it roll off of their backs and, you know, let people poke fun and poke fun back. So I, yeah, I, I think you could all be more lighthearted. Yeah. Social media is definitely a double-edged sword because it can be a good thing because it keeps companies accountable. You mm -hmm. know, before the days of social media, a company could be so abusive and how do you call them out on it? So they'll ignore your phone calls or your emails or whatever it was. But now with things being so visible and transparent, it really keeps companies on their toes, on their toes yeah. accountable. So that's a good thing. The other side, however, is you'll have the people out there who, if they want to ruin you, they can do a really good, it's very easy. It's easier for them to go bash a company because of that. So there's this balancing act you constantly have to play. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a different landscape with social media. Yeah. And I think that, you know, to wrap this up, I wish people understood that because one of the things that I, I got back in, I keep refer referencing Real Dog Box because that was most recent, is I had so many people saying to me, it's just a company, you know, as if none of their words mattered because they were saying it to a company. And it's like, you do realize that companies aren't this, you know, this object that, you know, there are people that make up that company. Yes, Real Dog Box is a company, but it's people. And so when you say these things, you're saying it to people. You're not just saying it to a company. And, um, and I think that that's what makes people, because I ultimately, I think, I hope that most people are good people. It's just that they've managed, thanks to social media, it's so easy to put up that wall and act as if you're not harming a person. It's, you know, and it's time for us to sort of like start recognizing that, no, when I'm saying these awful, horrible things about this company, I'm, it's basically splashing onto the people that make up that company and it's not cool. So yeah. Um, yeah. ladies, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I super appreciate it. Thank you. Thank this was fun. <laughs> and it was nice meeting you too, Ruby. You too. I gotta go, I gotta go check out the dog box then. Yeah, me it, too. It's awesome. <laughs> what is it? Dog box? The dog box or dog box? Real I, I, dog box. Real dog box? Yeah. Ruby, I actually had one of my followers because Dr. Kozier and I do the lives. Someone actually complained about how often I bring up real dog box. <laughs> <laughs> well, <And> so I, <laughs> the one thing that we all know is no publicity is bad publicity. In the moment, it doesn't feel like that, but <laughs> I, know. I know it's like I and I told I it was we we laughed it off and stuff. But I told her I was like, I'll try not to mention it as much. Maybe I'll just mention it once because there was a time when I had like boxes stacked up behind me, and I'd be yeah. like, well, and then I did this. <laughs> Or I would pull out whenever cocoa therapy came up, I would just pull because I used to have a jar sitting right here and put it up. I have a jar every, all around my house. So it's insane. <laughs> oh, we love I it. Thank you.